Welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. To those turning in your neighbors, you did the right thing. We got that story, plus open source ventilators. But first, the state of the police state. First, to our video editor, Brock West, old stomping ground. Here's what you need to know about Australia's coronavirus tracking app. The Australian federal government planning to release a new app to help it track and trace coronavirus. The tracing app will be a tool to augment traditional manual contact tracing by using Australians' phones to help detect who who they have been in close proximity with. Proposals have been met with some skepticism over the government's collection of personal information. Interestingly enough, James Government Services Minister Stuart Robert said he actually planned to release the source codes and a privacy impact assessment of the app in a bid to shore up the public's confidence around the new track and trace surveillance tool that they're forcing out to everyone. Next up, I believe, Corbett, this is your old, your old stomping grounds, eh? <sighs> Alberta's Bill 10 is an affront to the rule of law. Interestingly enough, pretty strong wording from National Post. And again, everything we say and play will always be included down in your show notes. As though following Machiavellian advice to never let a crisis go to waste, the Alberta government has quietly expanded its own power under the Public Health Act Bill 10, which was rushed through the legislature in classic style less than 48 hours, gives cabinet ministers new powers to write de facto laws and create penalties without the approval of those pesky legislative assemblies. Before, this is before Bill 10 became law on April 2nd, Alberta's Public Health Act already empowered politicians and bureaucrats to take property away from citizens and organizations, to force citizens to render aid, to conscript people to help deal with an emergency, and to enter into any building or property without a warrant. Chief Medical Officer was already empowered to forcibly quarantine anyone who is ill or any person who's caring for a sick family member. Before Bill 10, cabinet ministers were already empowered to suspend the operation of provincial laws in whole or in part once cabinet declared a public health emergency as we've talked to many many times saying national emergency is this sort of magic word that of course all the all the government goodness starts to flow this is all through simple ministerial orders cabinet ministers have acquired the additional powers now of creating and implementing new orders and penalties without them being discussed scrutinized debated or approved by the legislative assembly of alberta and james for the hat trick, we head to your current neck of the woods. Got an interesting story here from japantoday.com. LGBT people in Japan worry getting coronavirus may result in outing. Many members of sexual minorities in Japan worry that catching the novel coronavirus could mean their sexual orientation is revealed against their will as authorities probe infection routes. A supporters group has found a survey by Marriage for All Japan showed they worry about whether they or their partner will be able to receive important medical information that hospitals provide to family members if one of them becomes infected with the pneumonia-causing virus. James, can we start a new series called State of the Police State? I think we're going to have to, because I hope people see how these stories start to fit together into an all-seeing, all-knowing, total surveillance grid where the powers that shouldn't be claim out of nowhere to have the authority to make any laws they want at any time without any approval or any input whatsoever. They rule over you. They will force you to take contact, contact tracing apps on your phone, your little slave device that you carry around everywhere that will monitor everything you do, everywhere you go, make note of it so that the authorities will be able to determine, of course, when they discover you're an asymptomatic carrier based on whatever f- false positive test they come up with, then they can go back and, well, they don't even need that, but that's just the fig leaf of an excuse to go back and see and detail every one of your contacts. And yes, it will it will out gay people. It will uh, it, it be into every corner of your life. No relation that you have with anybody will in any way be private anymore, ever again, it, when and if this goes in place. You will never again be able to meet someone without the government knowing about it. And uh, and eventually everyone knowing about it, because, of course, it will it will come out. Oh, he he had contact with this sick person. Well, how did you how do you have contact with that sick person? When did that happen? Literally end of privacy done gonzo. And it is happening right now. And it is coming together in this police state grid that is slotting into place in Australia, in Canada, in Japan, in the U.S., where you are, where I guarantee whatever country you're watching this in is happening there as well. And it's all happening around the world simultaneously on the back of this scamdemic that is uh, foisting its way uh, through the the would-be legislators. It it is absolutely 
insane. And I hope people can see the pieces of this all coming together into the complete, total Panopticon surveillance police state lockdown grid where you literally have no privacy anymore and no ability to do anything with uh, outside of the purview of the government. It is insanity. And anyone who doesn't realize the gravity of this my mind boggles. My mind boggles at a lot of... Or I, I, I know some uh, alt-media commentators and others that are now still trying to talk about, you know, the American presidential election and, you know, Bernie versus Joe and things like this. Th what on earth are you doing? This is the most important thing that is happening in the world by far in our entire lifetime. It is happening now. Your rights are disappearing and people don't seem to even notice what's happening. Connect the pieces, people. Well, and if they don't even do not notice, but again, it'll come with thunderous applause, essentially. James, we have basically talked about all of these technologies. I think, in a way, very little of this is new. The only thing that's new is that it's openly talking about tracking and tracing you. What are you? Do the phones suddenly have some magical capability to track and trace? They installed that in your firmware over the weekend? No, it's always been there. They're just sort of the psyop is openly getting people to to embrace it. And that is only the first segment here on Neural Next Week, episode 405. We head to story two, where I think in some ways, as as somebody like Jello Biafra talked about a lot, and something I enjoy doing as a kid, essentially pranks, I think. And Jello Biafra even called it monkey wrenching the new world order back in the day. And I think we're only going to see way more of this and we'll see how it shakes out. Interesting, interesting story, though. Up first here, neo-Nazis nabbed 20,000 leaked email addresses and passwords from the World Health Organization and the Gates Foundation right-wing activists. Got a hold of a leaked list of more than 20,000 email and password credentials thought to belong to key frontline coronavirus organizations, including World Health Organization, the Gates Foundation, and the National Institutes of Health. That's according to Site Intelligence Group. Some folks might remember that name, that wildly sketchy Israeli intelligence group that gave us all those fantastic bin Laden videos in the Audis. Funny how kind of close they always are to the alleged perps that they're allegedly tracking. <laughs> They said the information was circulated among far-right extremists just a few days ago. The group described it as an attempt to weaponize the COVID-19 pandemic. It's unclear who obtained and published the information, though sites said it appeared to have surfaced on the 4chan message board before being republished elsewhere. Sites said it could not verify any of this crap. Who said it ran precautionary tests on active World Health Organization email addresses and found nothing has been compromised? Gates Foundation, CDC, World Bank, also said to have been targeted, didn't respond to Business Insider's request for comment. I think this one kind of sounds like rich creamery butter, a possible Mossad virtual flag operation designed to, I think I keep, keep stirring the pot up, keep riling people up, James. Some interesting relateds to this one. We talked about Site Intelligence Group most recently on New World Next Week back on December 3rd, 2015. 2015, Rita Katz deserves an Oscar nomination. I go way back, November 27th, 2007, to MediaMonarchy.com, suspicious site to release another Bin Laden tape. So now, as long as we're talking about Bill Gates, I think in some ways, James, you know, this this hits all my all my hashtags, basically. Other interesting bits going on with Microsoft, pretty much right now, a little sidebar bit. They busted out this ad featuring spirit cooking aficionado Marina Abramovich, and they basically deleted it very quickly. We'll include the links to watch this very bizarre ad with very satanic, Luciferian-looking Marina talking about HoloLens and AI and all this kind of scary good stuff. But the pushback. And maybe in some ways, you know, I think initially I saw this story about the, the Gates emails. You're like, oh, man, white hat hackers, they're on. We're going to hack them. We're going to find out exactly what they're up to. And then you find it comes from site, and it all seems a little sketchy to me. In other less sketchy ways that people are, I think, monkey wrenching the new world order. New York City Mayor de Blasio's social distancing tip line flooded with penis photos and Hitler memes. Mayor Bill de Blasio's critics let him know how they really feel about him ordering New Yorkers to snitch on each other for violating social distancing rules by flooding his new tip line with crank complaints, including penis photos and, of course, people flipping the bird. 
photos of extended middle fingers. The mayor dropping the Staten Island groundhog, apparently. News coverage of him going to the gym have all been texted to a special tip line that de Blasio announced just over the last weekend. One user sent the message, we will fight this tyrannical overreach, which got an automated response that said, hello, thank you for texting NYC 311. There were memes showing Hitler in the words, to those turning in your neighbors and local businesses, you did the right thing. I mean, it, it was his birthday week and all. Start flooding their reporting tax numbers with this pics, the tweet added. So this is, again, a way people, I think, in, people are pushing back in small ways. And I think it's going to get in a lot of bigger ways pretty soon. The, again, hat trick in the second story, James, Russians, because they're bad, launch mass virtual protests using sat-nav application. This coming from our friends at activistpost.com. Russia, of course, also in the midst of a strict COVID lockdown. Protesters can't take to the streets, but they are holding demonstrations digitally. Residents of the southern city of Rostov-on-Don gathered outside a local government building to protest strict self-isolation regime also demanding payment of social benefits to all the people that have lost their jobs for this pandemic. These gatherings are being conducted through something called Yandex.Navigator, an application actually run by one of Russia's biggest digital giants, Russia's Fangsters. The popular sat-nav tool allows drivers themselves to report on the traffic situation on roads in real time. That feature allows users with an axe to grind to tag themselves in politically symbolic locations and write protest slogans in their comments. In some ways, James, it sounds a little like the Gulag-owned Waze traffic app that people have been misusing now for years to redirect entire traffic flows out of their neighborhoods. So the protests already this past weekend and more starting to get heated up here in the States. I expect things to kind of have a big boost around the big important day of May Day, May 1st. I think so many just obviously agitprop stories and photos. This is a full-on propaganda war. Getting all the fake lefties, getting all the Trump cultists, everybody all riled up, and they're going to meet in the streets. But remember, if there is anything the state is good at, it's, of course, taking down people who think they're going to get uppity and rise up. So, James, the pushback has begun, and I think it's only, it's only started. What's your, what's your thoughts? On the Gates story, I'm with you. Anything that's coming from site intel is clearly suspect. And look at how they're immediately framing this. If you are against the Gates Foundation, WHO, any of these people who are clearly pushing the scandemic, if you are in any way opposed to them, that you're a neo-Nazi right-wing white nationalist hater, blah, 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 whatever... Uh, so they're, of course, putting the box around that. And it gives them the opportunity to launder in disinformation now so that you can anonymously post to 4chan, oh yeah, well, I read in one of the emails that I managed to get from this uh, this password that, that was uh, leaked here that uh, there was a Wuhan Institute researcher who stopped on a route to the P4 lab and left a box of dry ice near an air vent in the fish market. Really? Where does this come from again? Oh, it's just an anonymous post on 4chan? you have any screenshot of that email? Anything verifiable? No, it's just something someone's writing. So, you know, take it for what it's worth, which is absolutely nothing until, again, anything is behind it. But it's a great way to launder in disinformation and get people spinning off into a million different directions. So, unfortunately, yeah, I mean, hey, white hat hackers, uh, G Gates, WHO, hey, sounds like a good uh, juicy target. But, oh, wait, no, of course, they're going to get ahead of this. They're going to deflect it and they're going to use this as another excuse for wiping off uh, dissent from the internet, as, of course, we know YouTube already is. If you go against what the WHO says about the scandemic, then you are going to be removed. They've already said it, folks. It's already coming. So you know what to do when we are removed from YouTube, which is coming. You know this is coming. So when we are removed, you know, because you already know about CorbettReport.com and MediaMonarchy.com and how to access our work not on YouTube, right? Right. So please keep that in mind. Uh, on the note of the digital protests, uh, yeah, I like the idea of monkey wrenching the snitch state uh, hotlines to with uh, whatever whatever kind of nonsense to uh, to f clog up their snitch state uh, tattletale lines. I think that's a, a a nice way of using that uh, that sort of um, snitch culture against itself. Uh, on the note of the Russian story, it's interesting, but to my mind, 
it's like we the public keeps getting boxed into smaller and smaller corners. It's like now you can't even physically protest in an actual space. But don't worry, guys. Here's your outlet. You can do it online. You can do this completely meaningless little virtual protest thing that really is literally just ones and zeros and servers somewhere. It means absolutely nothing in actual real space. And now this is your outlet for getting your rage out. So I appreciate people are doing what they can, which is not very much, but at least recognize that the ability to do things in re reality is getting smaller and smaller and smaller as the police state closes in. Well, and think about, I mean, what you're talking about is this sort of, it's happening on a sort of theoretical level, but it's also happening in a way that, you know, what we've joked about now for 20 freaking years. Oh, get in your free speech zone, this little box that across the street from the thing you're supposedly uh, protesting. Uh, James, speaking of YouTube, I got not one, but two decade old flags of content for some of my videos just, just this past week. Literally 2010 videos from when I used to do the show and I would live stream it and do all that stuff. I think honestly what it is in this case, the music bed that I used back then, I think some of those artists in the more present day have hooked up with the companies who deploy the robots to go find where their music is being used. I don't actually see any sinister motive, I don't think, at least not in this case. I also don't have a YouTube channel like you or like Last, Last American Vagabond or others. Sidebar, Last American Vagabond's been doing fantastic work with uh, Whitney Webb recently. Finally, here on this Neural Next Week, episode 405, a little bit of good news. But let's, as I can just, you know, James, as soon as we kind of get into this, I can just hear all the like, da 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 no, this isn't even real. Why would you talk about masks when it's a fake thing? Let's put aside whatever this thing is, whether they made it happen, let it happen, live exercise, accident, all the above. Let's imagine this last story is about like some wildfire or something and people needed masks. Factories in Colombia's second largest city, Medellin, are set to mass-produce ventilators after local scientists and engineers were able to design and test the life-saving medical machines in a month. By the end of May, the initial mass production will have added 1,500 life-saving oxygen providers to the estimated 5,000 ventilators for adults in use in the country's hospitals. Because the developers used open source techniques, other factories were able to add production capacity if necessary. Until now, nobody in Colombia had the tech to produce these. It wasn't even available in hospitals, poorest parts. This is the interesting part, James, too. It says the pandemic is expected to basically hit Colombia and Medellin in five to six weeks. In five to six weeks, they will have essentially made all these open source ventilators and they'll already be able to roll them out. I'm reminded of a story, again, I did hear on The Last American Vagabond and had to hunt it down. Oh, because they edited the story. The original Jerusalem Post story headline, U.S. Department of Defense give one million masks to Israeli defense forces for coronavirus use. The edited Jerusalem Post story, Israel brings one million masks from China for IDF soldiers. They didn't even bother to, like, repost the edited version or even change the URL. The web address still says DOD gave a million masks to the IDF, but... I'm really kind of messing up the good news here. Is this uh, open source for the win again, James? Yes. All right. So, <laughs> yeah, we always talk about not unmitigated good news. And is there any other kind? So, yeah, good news. Absolutely. Open source trumps uh, any other source of, uh, of, of production every time. And this is another example of it. We do not need... Trump coming out and invoking some Korean War Act in order to commandeer production and and in implement some sort of martial law in order to produce mass produce ventilators or you know commandeer GM or anything like that. No, no, it can be done through open source techniques. So that's that is the point, and I hope people understand that point. Having said that, let us put on record the mitigated part of this good news story, which is that the ventilators are in fact actually killing more people than they are helping. Um, and this is the part that is finally coming out. It's like, oh, we need a bajillion ventilators because we're, everyone's going to die. And now they're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't be using ventilators because they're killing people. Uh, even even the mainstream has picked up on this. Uh, this from AP a few weeks ago now. Some doctors moving away from ventilators for virus patients, which notes that... Uh, 
As health officials around the world push to get more ventilators to treat coronavirus patients, some doctors are moving away from using the breathing machines when they can. The reason? Some hospitals have reported unusually high death rates for coronavirus patients on ventilators, and some doctors worry that the machines could be harming certain patients. Mechanical ventilators push oxygen into patients whose lungs are failing. Using the machines involves sedating a patient and sticking a tube into the throat. Deaths in such sick patients are common, no matter what the reason they need the breathing help. Generally speaking, 40-50% to 50 of patients with severe respiratory distress die while on ventilators, experts say. But 80% or more of coronavirus patients placed on the machines in New York City have died, state and city officials say. So, long story short, the whole ventilator thing, which was a whole... Let's cast our mind back, low those many weeks ago... To justify the lockdown and ever, all the craziness that's going on now, remember, it was the big push, the bajillions of people that were going to be flooding the hospitals, and we don't have enough ICU beds and ventilators to take care of them all. That's why we all have to lock you in your homes as prisoners and shut down the world economy. That's the reason, in order to flatten the curve to make sure that that rush of patients doesn't happen so we don't overwhelm the ventilators. A, the ventilators are killing people, and B... Uh, the, we, we have flattened the curve. Look, it's, it's flattened out now. But now, now it's not about flattening the curve. Now it's about getting down to zero. Once, once coronavirus gets down to zero in the population, then maybe we'll let you out of your homes. So they keep moving the goalposts. Anyways, sorry to rain on the good news parade. You're right. The open source production is an important part. And I hope people understand that important part of this story, because it's about the production. But what they're producing is, unfortunately, going to kill people. Well, and it does look like the hospitals have been flooded with dancing routines on TikTok or some idiotic app. So, James, wait, are you, are you telling me that the cure is worse than the corona? Huh. Every single level of everything we've talked about. I have actually heard a bit of that, at least in the form of the longer folks are on a ventilator, the less likely they are to come off of that ventilator. I think that's even what happened to legendary folk singer-songwriter John Prine, who passed away this past week. Well, there, see, we're, we're great at just blowing the good news there, James. <laughs> we're Sorry. <all> screwed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's wrap up this episode 405 of New World Next Week, where I always like to mention that I essentially, I'm a radio guy, man. I've been doing radio in lots of different forms for 25 years or so. And I basically stream news, music, memes, and more Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Mountain Time at MediaMonarchy.com slash listen. I like to call it the best damn radio station you never heard, in addition to my morning news shows, the music. I play some what's called old-time radio. I also always play the latest episodes of your corporate report and last American vagabonds as well. James. Awesome. I thank you for that. And uh, let's keep plugging away. And James, talk to you next week. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. Take care.